Hello everyone. So today, as promised, I'm going to be showing you how you can use our Total Lab GXP module in combination with our Fretix 1D image analysis software to analyze a lateral flow image in a 21 CFR EU Annex 11 uh, GXP compliant manner. So when you do purchase the Fretix 1D image analysis software with the Total Lab GXP module, or in fact, any of our software with the GXP option, you will first, before you can get to the software, you will have this uh, login user interface, which is part of the regulations required for 21 CFR. Now, I've gone through and done the kind of setup that is, is required before you, you get to this because it's not particularly interactive, but I will do a video that more comprehensively describes how our 21 CFR GXP uh, compliance solution works and how you would set that up. But just for the moment, we're going to go into it as if it's already been set up. So the first thing you need to do before you can get to your analysis, and this is the same whether it's a lateral flow test, a western blot, a southern blot, an immuno blot of some description, uh, a dot blot, an electrophoresis gel, anything that you want to analyze in a compliant manner, this is the first step. So I've got my, my username here, which I've just put in for one for demo purposes. I've also got a magnifying glass here within my username box. So if I didn't know, if I wanted to easily select the user that I want to use the username as, I can just click on it in the drop down list and click OK. And then I've got my password field here. So as you can see, the password is obscured from anyone looking over your shoulder or anything. So there is a measure of security there. And again, when I go through a video going through all of the functions of our 21 CFR solution, I will go deeper into how we control passwords. So I'm just going to sign in. And as you can see, I've got this is a completely blank folder. I've not got any previous projects within it, but if I did, they would show up here. And you'll see how the picture builds as we start creating projects. So I'm going to go ahead and click New Project. And now it's asking me for a name for my project. So Lateral Flow 21 CFR Demo. Let's go for that. And in this section, I can include any notes um, that I might want to include in my analysis and in my um, report that I get out of the end of it. Things like antibody batch number, anything that happened that was a, a deviation from the, from the SOP, anything strange that happened in my results or in the run of the experiment, anything that I want to be captured and form part of the audit trail I can put in here. I'm not going to fill that for now. And then it says drop files here. I can drop my image files in by left clicking and dragging them in, or I can use browse. So there you can see I've just dropped in my uh, lateral flow demo image that I used in my previous video. So now I can see what files are going to be in as part of my project. I can create my project. And as you can see, this project has now, the odd trail has started to begin. So I've created the project. This is an active project. Uh, here's the date and timestamp. And the one here in the gray circle means this is the first revision of this project. The one here is the username of the person that created the project. So for me, that's user one. Um, so the project now exists in the secure folder in a secure state. So if I want to do any work on that, data, do any analysis, I have to check it out into a working folder on my computer that can be manipulated and edited before it's checked back in. So first thing I want to do is check out the project. And you'll see here I've got two of my uh, Total Lab software products plugged into my 21 CFR solution here. I've got Fretix 1D and I've got Fretix Array. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this in Fretix 1D. So if I click on Analyze, we get this familiar image from the other video. So this is my standard, I'll just adjust the contrast here. So this is my standard lateral flow test video that you'll see, for, uh, demo image, sorry, from you, so you'll recognize from a previous video. So I'm just gonna go through and analyze it briefly, just to show you what happens and how the audit trail is formed as I make my analysis, as it would do again, if I was doing a lateral flow test analysis or if I was doing a um, Western blot 
electrophoresis gel, any kind of analysis that I'm doing within my Foretics 1D software, they will all be handled the same. So if I come through and create lanes, and again, this doesn't work, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten lanes. So I would define my lanes as usual. I would subtract my background. And again, rolling ball is, is always preferable. There we go, that's a pretty decent setting. Uh, so then we'll come through and again, molecular weight is not particularly useful for for this experiment because I don't have a molecular weight marker standard to, to line this up with. Bands will automatically detect our bands and again it, it did not work very well with these bands so let's delete all these bands and I'll so lane one obviously one band here and our very faint bands here so again, I'm just left clicking and dragging the cursor along to create a band. And as you can see, as I'm moving along, the bands are created within my image. Now, they're the width of the lane. That's why they go over the edge of the strip here. If I had edited my lanes, if I was doing this properly, um, not for a demo, I would have made my lanes the same width as my strip. And then you can see this is actually the edge of the strip. So when we're editing our lanes to add in bands manually you can actually see at the bottom here is a thin strip of the lane that you're working on so this we can just simply zoom into the image that we're looking at and as we move along the cursor moves along to show us where we are in our image or we can look at the little strip at the bottom here and if the lane if the bands are visible uh, are, are quite clear, we'll be able to see them in the strip here at the bottom. But you can see as I go along, it's very interactive with the image that you're actually taking the data from. Left click, drag. You can also left click on the image to have a, a lane automatically inserted. However, in some cases, just like this one, it's more accurate to define the edges yourself. But were these very prominent bands in a high quality 16 bit image, the software would have no problem simply left clicking on it and then inserting a band at that point with the correct edges. So there we go. So I'm just going to move along from this workflow mode, but you get the gist of how I would define all of my bands within the within Fretics 1D. Normalization again is not depending on depends on your uh, experimental setup as to how useful this will be in a lateral flow situation if you wanted to express all of your bands as a percentage of your control band for example you may wish to set your control band one of your control bands as uh, your 100% mark and see what proportion the rest of these bands make up towards that control band so uh, if I just turn on the normalized volume here. So say my lane three control band was 100%, the band below it is has an intensity of 32% relative to the control band, 37%, 43%, so you'd get that relative expression. If you use the normalized function, quantity calibration, again, not hugely useful in a lateral in your typical lateral flow setup, but would allow you to generate a standard curve from three or more bands within your experiment if those were of a known uh, mass, volume, and any known kind of quantity, then you could build up your, um, your concentration curve from that and then express your results as whatever it may be, mass, concentration, something like that. And then we come through to the results section. Now, as you can see, we can still generate our PDF reports from our experiment here. 
but we can also do that within our 21 CFR environment as well. So I'm going to do it that way because I've already shown you how to do this in, in multiple videos about Foretics 1D. So I've got to the end of my analysis. I'm going to close down my project and I'm going to save it. So as you can see, I've now got a couple of steps that are in my audit trail that weren't there previously. So the software has read that I've checked out the project and I've done an analysis on it. And if I click this button here, so these are the extended notes. So it shows that I have opened Foretics 1D.exe, so the, this file here. Uh, it's not in a read-only state. It, I've checked it out to my working folder. The user that's done it is user1, again. Uh, it's it's not an approved uh, project. The analysis date here in, in numeric form and the project name here. So it showed me exactly who's checked it out, when they've checked it out, and what program they've checked it out in. Because our total of GXP module fits around lots of our different pieces of software. In fact, all of our software. Um, so we need that marker just to say what have what has this person opened this project in. So. I've still got the project checked out, which means that it's still in a temporary state. So until I check the project back in, it's in effect not saved, not secure, um, because it's still just a working copy that's on my computer. So to put it, put another copy of it into the secure folder where it is stored securely, immutable, etc., I need to just check it in and at which point I can add any notes for analysis. So I'm going to add some notes this time just to show you how those appear in the audit trail. So um, antibody batch number lateral flow demo. There we go. Click on OK. And as you can see, the notes, so the revision number has changed to revision 2 because I've checked it in and another revision is created. No data is deleted within our system. So what's happened here is there is revision one, and then next to it is revision two. And if we had five revisions, there'd be five files associated with this project, each one in addition to the other, not an overwrite or a delete, which is important to some users. And I can actually go back to previous revisions if I want to. So if I click this button here, I can check out a read-only copy of revision one. And I can see, so if I had done some change, if I'd made some changes to the data and I wanted to see what had changed between revision one and two, or what had changed between revision two and five, I can check out a read-only copy of the previous revisions to see how things have changed and potentially go back to them if um, a change has occurred and been checked in that is undesired. So there's a certain amount of redundancy in the system. So now I've done my analysis from my GXP solution, my 21 CFR compliant solution, I can export my analysis report. So if I just click here, there's no need to check out when you're, when you're So now the PDF report has been exported, this is what it looks like. So we've got various uh, information about the image on the right hand side, including if the project has been signed off and who it was signed off by. By now, this project has not been signed off yet, and I'll go into the sign on uh, the sign off procedure in a in a different video again, where I explain kind of a long form demo of the twenty one CFR solution. We've got the revision number that this particular report came from, the analysis date, who did the analysis and who created the report, which is username one. Uh, image information, a copy of the image, and you can see down here that the project is unapproved. So we've got the full audit trail here, including the machine name, the timestamps, the user, the operations that were performed on the data, the operating system user, and the notes, any notes that were included within the audit trail, as I showed you before. We've got the image, all of the data that I chose to show, normalization methods, etc. Got all of the band lane data, etc. And at the bottom, we've got some more information um, from the 
metadata that's held in the tip tags for the image. So if we close that down, if I wanted to send this project to be signed off by someone with kind of someone higher up in the lab than me, um, a lab manager, uh, someone that performs kind of oversight functions before this data would be accepted, uh, I can do that by clicking on the project and as you can see it's active project and clicking request sign off and again at this point I've again got the option to send any notes to raise any um, areas of the analysis that I might want to indicate or pass on a message to the person signing off the project so if my lab manager if I as an analyst and my lab manager was going to sign this off and I noticed something strange in lane 3 for example or an unexpected band I could say something like unexpected band in lane 3 to draw the attention to the person signing it off that I do know about this and that it's kind of up to them as my superior to make the judgment call as to whether they're going to accept or, or reject this um, this project sign off and as you can see the icons have changed within my project layout so I've now got an exclamation point and you can see that the project is now in an awaiting sign off state and I as the analyst no longer have any options but to check out a read only copy so I can't check out a copy and reanalyze the data or I can cancel the sign off request so I'm going to enact what would happen if I was the lab manager now if I wanted to log in to sign off this project. So as you can see, you can sign out from the bottom right hand corner there. So now I'm going to come and sign in as my user that has the sign, the permission to sign off project. So lab manager, supervisor, someone like that, someone in a position of, of trust. So I'm just going to, my user is called just user2. And so I'm going to sign in as them. And when you sign in as someone with the permission to sign off project, the first thing they see in their project list is uh, any projects that require sign off with this exclamation point uh, saying you've got projects that you need to sign off that someone has submitted to sign off. So if I click on this project, I can see the full audit trail that the analyst has filled in, including any notes that they might have put to themselves or to me. And I've got the option to check out a read only copy, cancel the sign off request, sign it off or reject the project. I can also export the analysis report, as I did the same analysis report that I showed you previously. The calibration report, and I'll go into calibration again more in depth on the full demo of our 21 CFR solution, but it refers to using calibrated, image in, it, calibrated images using step wedges and things like that. And I can export my calibration for my Foretics 1D software. The reason all of these operations have to be done on a read-only basis is because I as the person signing off the project shouldn't change the project I, I shouldn't have that power I should only have the power to look at the project as it has been done and say yes this is acceptable or no it is not so what I can do is check out a read-only copy and I can view what the analyst has done within the software so I can go back through all of their settings and say yes, yes I agree with this, this is the correct protocol as it is dictated in our lab, they followed everything correctly, I'm happy with the way that it's been done, so therefore I think the results are, are good, I'm happy. Um, so I'm going to sign off the project, if I click on sign off, again I get an option to insert any notes related to sign off, you know, say the analyst said there was an unexpected band in lane 3 as per the notes, and then I could come along and say, you know, uh, acceptable variance in lane three. So it means that I as the analyst, now I don't have to leave notes here, although that there is a potential setting to force this, but it means that I as the analyst, ha uh, I as the superior, the lab manager or someone, someone of that position, I have definitely looked at the project. I have verified that what the analyst has seen I am happy to accept the results regardless. Um, so it means there's a certain continuity through the audit trail that things have been raised and then questions have been answered and that's all part of the audit trail. So 
when someone comes in, like the FDA, to audit your site. For every project that's been analysed, they can see that there's been this conversation about whether it's going to be accepted or not, that the, it's been, the analysis has been performed as part, you know, within the, in line with the SOP and things like that. So this is the area where you can put any notes like that. And before I can sign it off, I have to put in my password for my user that has my sign up permission. So this again is a security feature that prevents, say, if I, as someone with the power to sign off project, had stepped away from my desk, but I'd stayed logged in, no one else can come and approve projects that I personally haven't looked at or been able to approve. So there's a measure of security there. So put my password in and you can see the project now has a tick and now it's complete. It's signed off. Um, I, as the person that signed it off, I can reopen the project if I want. I can reject the, um, the fact that it's signed off. Um, but for all intents and purposes, once a project is signed off, it shouldn't change from that point onwards. Um, but if it needs to, people with the sign off permission have that power. Now, I'm just going to show you what happens if I come back in to look at that as my analyst, as my first user. Sign in here. I can see that my project is marked as complete. It's ticked off. And the only option I've now got is to do a read-only checkout and do all of the functions that you can do in a read-only state, something that doesn't change the data because this project is complete, shouldn't change, everything that's done from this point onwards should be just report reports and, uh, and inspections and things like that, but nothing that changes the data, changes the way the analysis was done. So that's a brief overview of how in practice we would use our 21 CFR solution um, Total Lab GXP module in line with our Fretix 1D software to analyze a lateral flow test in such a way that it would be um, auditable and, and, and acceptable within a regulated environment such as within kind of um, advanced therapies, um, medical device, manufacture, things like that. As ever, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to try out Fretix 1D within your lab with your lateral flow data, please check out the links in the description below.